The main goals we wanted to try and achieve with Season 11 was providing players with the ability to have shorter session experiences. The other kind of main goal is about trying to provide players on-demand access to some of the best content that we have in Sea of Thieves. Part of our goals with this season were to make sessions more predictable, certainly from the start. So we wanted to make sure that every session has a clear and meaningful start point. The purpose of the quest table is about bringing all of those experiences together in one cohesive place, allowing players to just simply board their ship and play what they want, when they want. It's going to be a place that you go and access all of the voyages from all the different trading companies. And it's also the place where you can go and start tall tales and resume them and stuff. So you can kind of go into a specific trading company like the Gold Holders and then it'll have all of the kind of quest archetypes that they have down the side of the screen and you can just simply select one and just play it whenever you want. I played the game at beta with my family you know, so it was a real family game for me to start off with. But like, well, probably a lot of other players are going, it's like, what do you do when you kind of go into it? You know, you've got all of this content, but you're just like, no guidance, kind of just like thrown into the deep end kind of thing. And it was just trying to bring that all together. That's really the core of what we were trying to achieve here. Then you are seeing the length to all the voyage cards now, so there's kind of a bit more of an indication of how long something might take you. So at least you'll be able to go in with a purpose of, okay, I have this much time, I want to play this kind of thing, and it just kind of helps shorten that process even more. The Discover tab, I'm, I mean, I'm really excited about it. It's going to guide players through their pirate journey, essentially, exposing them to short-term, mid-term, or long-term goals. We wanted the Discover tab to be this place where we could kind of teach players all of the core systems and mechanics of the game and showcase all the breadth of amazing experiences the game has to offer so that they can see stuff, get excited about it and ultimately go on to play it themselves. We've built a complex logic system or recommendation engine that takes into account what the player does, their play style and their progression and makes a determination about what we should be recommending them. So what that means for a player is that you can jump in and we will recommend the things that we think you'll enjoy or are relevant to you or maybe have just unlocked based on something that you've just done. So for new players, it's going to be stuff that they're kind of introduced to um, throughout the player. So you'll get kind of these glimpses of what, well, I don't know what emissary is or captaincy. Um, so there's going to be some information about what those things are and kind of give you some goals to work towards and build up to. For experienced players, you're going to have things like you've just unlocked voyages in there, or you're going to have events and things like that for community events days that are going to be in there as well. So lots of different stuff. It gives us a lot more flexibility to do things like run live events. We can have voyages that activate only for a certain weekend or time period. And we can grant voyages to players that take part in, for instance, a community event. And it really allows us to do a lot more fun live events. Prior to season 11, players would start a quest and they'd have to sail to the location of their quest complete their quest, find the rewards, and ultimately return them to an outpost to cash them in. So with Season 11, players can just dive directly to the experience and then get straight into the action immediately, and then ultimately complete that experience and return the treasure back to the outpost. We were discussing and exploring all the key moments that happen across the Sea of Thieves, and one of the slowest parts of getting a session started and getting you straight to adventure is sailing to that initial island, whether it's an X marks or going to visit a particular NPC to start a tall tale. We couldn't change the gameplay experience because that's the gameplay, and we don't want to change the core loop of players having items of value at risk on the return journey back to the outpost. So the only really stuff that we could change to try and improve the speed of the experience and provide short session experiences was the time that it takes to get to the experience itself. As a converse of that, if you're the sort of player who enjoys, you know, seeing who's out there and attacking ships and that sort of stuff, 50% of the time they were on their way to getting some loot, right? So 50% of the time their ship was empty and 50% of the time you just annoyed some people. So whereas now the idea is that there's a much higher chance now that the ship is going to have something on it and isn't on their way to doing something. So that is a huge uh, way of just like concentrating the Sea of Thieves experience into all the good bits and chucking away the bits that weren't so fun. 
what we've done is make sure that if a player does dive to an activity, uh, they can dive again straight away, but they have to complete that activity to dive again. So if they do cancel the activity, there will be a cooldown timer before they can do that again. If a player does choose to dive again straight away after completing that quest, they will lose the loot that they have on board because we really wanted to encourage players to sail to the outpost to cash that loot in. Looking back across the game, the voyages don't really pay out enough gold for their position within the game. When you look at them against the other experiences that we have in the title. So this was a huge opportunity for us to not only go back to the voyages and kind of improve their gameplay, make them more fun to play, provide shorter session experiences to players as well, but also to kind of boost the gold value and reputation that they're worth to make them comparable against the other experiences that we have in the game. We now reward players with reputation for the trading companies for the simple act of completing a voyage. This means players who are short on time, who want to jump in for 20 minutes, half an hour, can jump in, dive to a voyage, complete that voyage, and they will be rewarded with reputation for that company. For season 11, for our new voyages, we saw the opportunity to create a new set of rewards for players exclusively for these voyages. And we've put a lot of time and dedication into making sure that these rewards are valuable and desirable. Um, I know the art teams have done an incredible job in making sure that these uh, rewards look incredible. It's always a fun task when we have to design new loot. So this time around the team was very like luxurious, so players can be expecting lots of gold. We are also working with a new marble shader, so the gold hoarded chests and the gold hoarded treasures will have that marble in them, and it really helps those new treasures to stand out from the ones we already have in the game. And then for the higher tiers, we're actually working with a new uh, crystal shader, which really sets itself apart because, again, gamers already associate crystal with like premium stuff and like high rarity. For example, for the Order of Soul Skulls, they start off looking like very dark, very obsidian, and then they gradually become more and more crystal, where the final skull is like full on crystal skull, which is great. The economy is something that we've tried to maintain over time, but Sea of Thieves has just grown so much, we've added so much. And my job was creating possibly the biggest spreadsheet that we've ever created at Rare and probably the most time-consuming spreadsheet uh, that we've ever created. It was basically my life for this whole uh, year that we've been making this uh, <laughs> season um, and certainly a, a real challenge. But all of that was invaluable in making sure that we balanced our new voyages for season 11 in a way that both felt rewarding but also sat well next to other things in the game it is something that we're always going to be looking to tweak and change. That will continue after season 11 and I think that with the work that we've put in for season 11 we're in a, a great place to be able to do that moving forward. And the big goal of season 11 is to make sure no matter what you do, you're always getting the same amount of gold and rep for the amount of time that you put in. That's the goal that we're aiming for. You're not choosing something by how much money you're going to make, you're choosing it by what you want to do, what's fun. World events within Sea of Thieves are some of our core experiences. We wanted to, as part of season 11, make sure that players could access these world events on demand. And we wanted to do that in a way that doesn't dramatically affect the meaning of world events within this whole of the Sea of Thieves. So we are adding the ability for players to dive to world events on demand. It means you will always get to the world event that you want. You don't have to spend ages on the server looking. I'd say you're guaranteed the treasure, but that depends on whether you actually beat it <laughs> and no one else comes along and steals it from you. Players won't be able to dive to all of the world events throughout where they need to progress through each of the trading companies. And as they reach certain levels, the world events will then be unlocked and then they can dive to them. And that does mean that players, when they dive to these world events, will be doing so on behalf of the trading companies. These world events effectively become brand new voyages for each of the trading companies. So you will be able to, for example, complete a skeleton fort on behalf of the gold hoarders. When players complete a world event for a company, they'll have all of the new kind of loot items for that company and then they'll have this special new world event specific like hero item that they have to return to that company and that'll be worth a lot of gold and a lot of reputation so that'll be kind of like the key item to return back to the traders. When we first put world events on demand into insiders you could have lots of players turning up to a skelly fart at once. You could get there and then another crew could be diving at the same time and they would pop up at the same skelly fort that you were there. But insiders don't like this because it meant that everyone was basically fighting each other rather than doing the skelly fort. So it became more about fighting and defending rather than 
killing the skelly fort and getting the loot for yourself. The insider's feedback was basically crucial to changing direction and I think actually resulted in us landing in a, in a much better place with these world events. So while you're the only crew now who can dive to the world event and you have it to yourself, that doesn't stop other crews in the shared world sailing up and joining you there. So be sure to keep a weather eye on the horizon. <laughs> There are events that players won't be able to dive to on demand, specifically the Fort of Fortune and the Fort of the Damned. We discussed this, um, but it never really felt like a possibility because those events are so driven by the idea that they appear as a, a one-off during your session and they kind of draw all crews together from the corners of the Sea of Thieves and everyone drops what they're doing, downs tools and, and goes to complete that event because they're so valuable and because there's so much unique loot there and because there's so much challenge in the gameplay and also the threat of other crews. Something that was really important to us was making sure that we kept that kind of beating heart of Sea of Thieves alive with the emergent world activities. So we've made a bunch of quality of life improvements to all of the emergent activities as well. And we've also put really, really high value loot in the emergent world now. And part of that was creating what, what we were calling internally as the S tier loot. So we have a S tier chests, S tier skulls, S tier trinkets for players to find in the emergent world that sit above all of the loot that the player has access to from the quest table. So obviously we've moved the purchasing of quests from the traders and they're just now part of the ship, but we still want the traders to have a place in the game and have a purpose in the game. Removing the voyages kind of gave us this space to put more stuff on the promotions. So again, kind of finishing off that loop of, I've just played a voyage, I've come back here, I've handed something in and oh, I've got like a rank up. When you go to claim your promotion, you're going to be presented with a certificate from the company shop and, you know, be able to view your items that you're going to unlock. And then once you've claimed them, you're then going to be presented with a new set of items that you're going to be aiming for. And then this is setting the player up for the next goal because accommodations are short term goals and, you know, the emissary is also a mid term goal. So trying to like funnel that in and expose that to the players at that level, um, we felt was really important. In general, this was actually a great opportunity for the team to have a look at those older company sets and then upgrade them. And quests are quite popular with players. So when we got the task to come up with new rewards for the companies, we knew quests were like at the top of that list. My favorite quests that we're introducing is actually one of the quests for Athena's Fortune because we decided to take inspiration from uh, the Fairy of the Damned. The crest will have those iconic skeletal horses you can find on that ship as well. And in general, it looks very ghostly, very creepy, and I think players are gonna love it. Then we also introduced some new trinkets that are a bit more grounded, a bit more lore friendly. For the merchants, we've got this clock that may or may not tell the actual time. And then for the Order of Souls, we've got this mirror that is super creepy, super elegant that players can hang up in their ship. And then lastly, and this was the one I'm actually the most excited for, is we're introducing these trinkets that are like super cute, plushy versions of the company leaders. And they look absolutely adorable. I think my favorite might actually be the Reaper one, because he almost looks a bit angry in his face, and that just makes him even more adorable. We know that a lot of our, especially our most dedicated players, have maxed out all of our trading companies and have been begging us for a better, longer progression system for them. And so part of that and part of the discussions that we were really passionate about early on was the idea of distinctions. Distinctions essentially allow a player to complete a trading company more than once. So we've expanded our max level cap for every trading company, except the Hunter's Call, to level 100. Which is where you'll earn a distinction for that trading company. And when you earn a distinction for the company, your level will reset back down to level one. We've added in a total of five distinctions for all the companies. So you can kind of go around the clock up to five times for each of the training companies. But it's a really cool way of us making sure that all the treasure you cash in, you're always ticking something up. It always feels like you're getting something out of your sessions, even if you've played for thousands of hours, which we know some players have. So when players earn a distinction for a trading company, they earn a bespoke new cosmetic, which is a trading company ring that's themed to that specific company. So for uh, distinction one, you would claim one ring, then you get a second ring for distinction two, three, four, and five, until like your full hand has a ring on each finger. The interesting thing about rings is like, it's one of the few player cosmetics that you can always see. Like no matter if you're reloading, you're fighting, you're 
taking snow up, you can always see your rings and admire them. And I think that alone makes them quite high value for players. And in general, players have been really asking for rings. They're a great customization option. So if players wanted to wear other souls rings on one hand and reapers rings on the other, they can totally do that. With all the changes that we've made to the quest table and diving to experiences on demand, we thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of go back and look at all of the onboarding that we've done for Sea of Thieves and create some brand new tutorials. Going from the maiden voyage to the main world, there wasn't much of a transition. Now you'll actually wake up on your ship instead of waking up in the tavern. And when you're on the ship, be greeted by the pirate lord. He'll prompt you to start a new voyage. Uh, you get to choose here one of the three voyages that we've built tutorials for. We were really keen to kind of teach players the core mechanics of each of the companies, like the Gold Orders, the Order of Souls, and the Merchant Alliance. Each trading company tutorial takes you on a very short voyage to complete either an X marks the spot map, a bounty quest, or a simple kind of fauna quest where you have to collect a chicken and take it back to safety. Where the Pirate Lord will take you through the voyage step by step, will tell you uh, how to use the map table, uh, where to find the island, and once you get to the island, it will give you instructions on where to find the treasure uh, and how to recover it. We wanted to teach a little bit in more detail the core loop of Sea of Thieves in terms of earning treasure in the world and then that being susceptible to loss from other players until you've cashed it in at the outpost so that they can be ready to play Sea of Thieves in, in that kind of high sea experience. And I just think for new players, I think it's going to really help them solidify what Sea of Thieves is about. They can do those and come back and think, actually, yeah, this game's for me and I understand it now, as opposed to, you know, maybe getting it, maybe not, and, and that being a bit of a gamble, whereas this feels like it's a real kind of step change in how we how we deliver those, that sort of stuff for players. So we ran it through UXR, which is our user experience research lab. We've done two studies on that um, with real players, um, just to really plug in any holes to make sure that new players are going to really understand how to play the game. So we've got a lot of confidence in these tutorials that they're going to hit the right spots and that players are going to get what they need from these tutorials. Season 11, the changes to the emergent world mean that regardless of short or long sessions, there's always something waiting just beyond the horizon to take you by surprise. For people who only have the time to play shorter sessions, there'll be more meaningful progress available to them, more predictably. And for people who want to play longer, classic Sea of Thieves sessions, we truly believe there'll be more treasure and gold on the seas that will make those sessions more exciting. Play it now with Game Pass.